All right, so I've weighed out my tartaric acid. I'm now going to dissolve this. How much water should I use? Well, I'm going to dissolve it in enough water so that my pH electrode can be submerged completely in the solution. Uh, so whatever that volume is, I'm gonna try with 50 milliliters first and see where that gets me. Just like in our titration, uh, using an indicator to determine the endpoint, there's no need to actually measure the volume or the volume of water added. No, no need to be precise on that. You can just add a little bit of water from your um, wash bottle, and then swirl to dissolve. This dissolves pretty quickly, so that's nice. It's not always the case with weak acids. Okay, so my tartaric acid is dissolved in water. My burette is filled with sodium hydroxide. I'm going to place my tartaric acid on a stir plate. Lower the burette so that it's inside this beaker smidge. And I've set up my uh, pH electrode on an arm. Uh, attached to the pH meter itself and uh, I made sure that the yes the glass bulb is completely submerged in the tartaric acid. Did uh, calibrate the pH electrode pH meter. So I'm sitting on a stool because my uh, setup here is pretty tall and I want to make sure my eyes are level with the uh, burette, the meniscus in the burette. Got my burette reading card, and I'm going to read the initial volume on the burette. I have 4.95 mils for my volume reading. And my pH is 2.47. So as we do this titration, we're going to be adding volumes of sodium hydroxide and measuring the pH, recording the pH. So we're gonna have those two data points together. And from that, we're gonna construct a calibration curve. Tartaric acid is a diprotic acid. Um, and so the titration curve won't look as crisp as if it were a monoprotic weak acid. There may be a, a slight slope uh, and then a sharp rise to reach the, an endpoint. Sometimes with the equivalence point, sometimes with the uh, diprotic acids, uh, you don't see a first equivalence point. That depends on the pKa's for the two protons in the acid. Okay, so I am going to add about a milliliter or half milliliter um, and record the pH until I until the pH is increasing enough where I think I'm getting close to an equivalence point. Oh. I almost forgot. I need to stir my solution, so I'm gonna add a stir bar. And turn on my stir plate. Now we want to be careful that the stir bar isn't uh, hitting the pH electrode. So you gotta set that up just so. There we go. Okay. So now we've got stirring. We don't wanna stir too fast. That's a little much. All right. Read a volume. 5.49, record, 2.40, interesting. I might have to do with the stirring.
Now, I know that the pH isn't changing very much at this particular point in the titration curve. So I added a, maybe a milliliter this time. I'm at 7.58. And my pH is 2.62. So I'm going to add another big mill here. Yeah, because a milliliter is huge, right? So we've added over 10 milliliters at this point. The pH hasn't, hasn't increased very drastically. It doesn't feel like it's changing very much. So I'm just gonna keep going with a mil, half mil in that range and see where that gets us. I am going to start to slow down here a little bit. I'm noticing that they're, we're increasing the pH about 0.1 pH units for every, like, almost one, well, between a half and one milliliter. Twenty one point one zero. 4.55, okay, so that wasn't as drastic. I haven't done one of these in, with this acid in a, a couple of years. I have done it before, but uh, it's been a while, so I, I don't know what to expect, essentially. Um, so I'm just winging it. And that's what you should do for the, the first titration that you perform on the acid. Just sort of see what you get. Don't be afraid to go past the equivalence point. Um, 21.60. The uh, it's just a, essentially it's a trial, and then when you go and do another one, that's when you can really try to be better, more accurate, make more precise measurements. So 4.68. Okay, here we go. We're getting closer now. 22.26. And we are at 4.91. So I am going to try to add just a tiny amount. I'm not even watching the measurement. I'm just going to add one drop, see where we go. Okay, nothing exciting happening there. So I'm going to add another. There's two more drops. We're at 22.45. And we're at 4.99. So one, two, three, four drops. Okay, 23.1112, So it's okay if you add a drop or two, see what, change, what happens with the pH, and if you want to add a couple more drops after that, and then write it down the value, that's totally fine. Oh boy, it's exciting now. Okay, I added two drops. I'm at 23.72. 
and my pH jumped all the way up to 6.26. Oh, oh, I went way over on that one. I should know better. Okay, 23.90. This is actually not bad at all. Okay, just a little bit silly here. 6.73, so I went up two mils, the pH increased by 0.5. This has gotta be the, the um, equivalence point. Just gonna add another, try to only add two drops here. One, two, it's gonna take a little while to stabilize. Might as well take my, my volume measurement, 24.00. And we are at, when you get right around the equivalence point, it's interesting how much the pH will change. Uh, and it takes a while to stabilize. So 7.16. Okay, let's have one drop. Boom. 24.05. Just gonna wait. Now, I'm wondering here if part of the reason why the pH is dropping is because we're adding a little bit of air and the CO2 couples, uh, reacts with the water and forms uh, carbonic acid. But, nevertheless, I'm going with it. Alright, and we're gonna add one drop. Boom. 24.09. Uh, 8.58. See, that was a big one. Woo wee! We are at the equivalence point, my friends. One drop. Boom. 24.15. Takes a while. Just be patient. Ah, 9.03. Another drop. Soon this is going to start to level out again and we can add larger drops of, uh, of sodium hydroxide. To make it speed up a smidge more. 24.21. We are at 9.29, I believe. Go with it. Let's add a drop. Whoops, added two that time. 24.31. Nine point six zero. Let's add two more drops. I think we're past the really exciting part. One. Okay, so we're gonna continue on with this until we get our pH out past 11. With the acids that you're gonna have, and with tartaric acid, you're gonna see much change past that pH of 11, so um, we're gonna stop there. Okay, so well, this whole time I've been filling out um, a paper version of a lab notebook. This may be the, your approach. Um, we now need to plot this and make a titration curve, and then we can go on and uh, 
figure out the PKAs associated with tartaric acid and figure out its equivalent weight and molecular weight from that. Gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me.